السلام علیکم ایوری ون ڈاکٹر عائشہ گیاس ہیئر اینڈ وی گیو اے پریزنٹیشن آئی گیو اے پریزنٹیشن ایٹ ربر منڈی میڈیکل یونیورسٹی اٹ واز بیسیکلی تھری پریزنٹیشنس اینڈ مینی آف یو آسٹ می ٹو اپلوڈ دا پریزنٹیشن بٹ دین آئی تھاٹ مے بی آئی شوڈ ریکارڈ دا پریزنٹیشن ود دی ایکچوئل فیچرز ایکسپلین سو دیٹ یو مائٹ بی ایبل ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ اباؤٹ دی فیچرس یو مائٹ بی ایبل ٹو آئیڈینٹیفائی دا اسٹرکچرز پراپرلی اینڈ ویر ایور یو فیل لائک یو کین کانٹیکٹ می اوکے سو دس ووڈ بی اے ریکارڈیڈ پریزنٹیشن آف دا سیم دیٹ آئی ڈلیورڈ اوور دیئر اینڈ اف سم آف یو ور دیئر یو مائٹ ریمبر دیٹ اٹ اسٹارٹ اٹ آف ود دس ٹیکسٹ میسیج دیٹ آئی ریسیو فرام دا سن آف اے فادر and the son lived in australia he was very much concerned about the nature of a lesion that i am just about to show you people uh, it was the cheek of his father and he was concerned whether this lesion needs to be biopsied or if it's concerning or not so the patient was brought to me by one of my senior registrars and uh, they said okay ma'am please have a look at the patient and then we saw with the dermoscopy and on dermoscopy as you can see we saw the pigmented streaks as these two streaks you may see are coming from the same point making up the you know the radial streaks or uh, a maple leaf pattern or uh, a spoke wheel pattern and then obviously you may see these isolated blue dots and globules so all these features in combined were uh, pointing towards the diagnosis of pigmented bcc we sent the patient for biopsy and it came out to be a pigmented bcc so this message was kind of a gratitude from the son that uh, his father was diagnosed well in time and then the tumor was uh, you know gotten rid of okay so education is a progressive discovery of one's own ignorance and i dedicated my talk to my teachers my mentors professor shahbaz zaman and professor tahir jamil obviously and then uh, my mentors from abroad uh, who helped me out throughout these dermoscopy diplomas and they are very kind people they are still in touch and if i am struck somewhere i request about their guidelines and they are there to help me uh this is the picture of my uh, alma mater king edward medical university where i graduated from and i got my training from and i am serving there and this is the picture of my department of dermatology okay so about the basics and advanced specific learning objectives of this presentations were to understand the basic terminology identify dermoscopic structures and their arrangement and then apply some of the methods of dermoscopic interpretation well there are many and obviously at the end we should be able to diagnose some of the benign and malignant disorders if not all so about the basics of dermoscopy the first question that comes to our mind is that why at all do we need to go for uh, dermoscopy can we diagnose every dermatological lesion on our own clinically or do we really need to go for biopsy and why at all do we need to go for the dermoscopy which stands in between the clinical and the biopsy so the naked eye presentation as you may see on the left side of two lesions appears almost the same clinically but when you go up, um, for the dermoscopy on the right side as you can see in the upper lesion you may see the pigmented network and the network is kind of a regular one dispersed throughout the lesion however in the lesion uh, lower below in the lower picture on the right side you may see these isolated dots and clots in the periphery of the lesion so the diagnosis of uh, nevus was there in the upper lesion however the diagnosis of melanoma was there in the lower lesion so that's the significance of going uh, for dermoscopy in clinically simple lesions that usually do not you know many of them do not appear as malignant or very malignant but then when we see with the dermoscopy we may uh, be able to differentiate them also it's non invasive handheld it can capture images it can also record uh, the videos and it can calibrate uh, obviously it needs biopsy so that's how that's why we use dermoscopy in our clinical practice A survey was conducted uh, to see whether dermoscopy practices are being uh, uh, taken by many dermatologists or not and the study was conducted at many centers. Uh, in the study they found out that almost 88% of the dermatologists in Europe are using dermoscopy and 81% in USA, 87% in Canada. And what do you think is the situation in Pakistan? so we are about to conduct the study and we are just finished with making up that google form you'll uh, soon see uh, in all the groups and i request all of you to please uh, fill up that google form 
for us so you so that we may be able to uh, come up with our own stats be it 1% or less than 1% that does not matter but let's start up from somewhere so please fill up that form whenever you see okay so whenever you perform dermoscopy your diagnostic accuracy jumps up from 60 to 90 okay 60% <clears throat> excuse me to 90% when you do dermoscopy in certain lesions but this is a matter of concern that the uh, diagnostic accuracy remains the same if you are untrained or less experienced that means it stays the same around 60% and it does not go to 90% which is only of uh, which is only possible whenever when you are uh, properly trained in dermoscopy okay so there is a term called cdpc जब हम छोटे थे और ये ट्रेनिंग चल रही थी हमारी तो मोस्टली हम यही सुनते थे क्लिनिको पैथोलॉजिकल को रिलेशन लेकिन अब जनाब टर्म चेंज हो गई है एंड नाउ इट्स सी डी पी सी विच इज क्लिनिको डरमोस्कोपिको पैथोलॉजिकल को रिलेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी ऑलवेज हैव अ क्लिनिकल इंडेक्स ऑफ सस्पेशन नॉट ऑल द रिलीजन नीड टू बी सीन विद डरमोस्कोपी एंड बाई ऑपसीड सो वेन एवर वी हैव एन इंडेक्स ऑफ सस्पेशन वी गो फॉर डरमोस्कोपी एंड देन ऑब्वियसली इन द एंड वी गो फॉर हिस्टोलॉजी दैट्स द होल कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सी डी पी सी okay so now the question is how to do dermoscopy if you are and you are on my channel the youtube channel awareness and in the layman language but uh, i have uploaded a video it's almost 3 minutes duration uh, about the uh, uh, hand find that video in the channel you may search it uh, by writing dr aisha gyals how to use uh, how to do dermoscopy or how to use dermoscope so you may um, find a comfortable uh, that video and if you feel that you have a certain different model of dermoscopy then let me know we may uh, guide you likewise okay so the video is very simple the link is over here aap isko type kar sakte hain aur otherwise uh, you may uh, write in the search button of youtube dr aisha gyas how to use your mosquito beads uh, very simple okay what are the dermoscopy physics ye bada important hai janne ke liye obviously you are using a tool and you are going to be very confident about it that it may diagnose pre malignant and malignant lesion so how does it really diagnose all of you are having the hand lenses or the magnifying lenses in at your clinics what they do is they magnify and they illuminate all of you know so the first thing they do is they magnify the lesion for you they make it bigger secondly they put up some light on it so they make it more prominent the third thing is being achieved by a dermoscope that is addition of the depth so it's the depth that makes a dermoscope different and superior to a magnifying lens This is pretty much the same principle that we use in our polarized sunglasses that block the uh, light waves that are vibrating perpendicular to the highway and only uh, that are uh, you know block the light waves that are horizontal to the highway because they add the glare and then only light waves that are vibrating perpendicular to the highway are allowed to pass through the uh, polarized uh, lens of the glasses the spectacles that we are using for uv protection and they make us able to see the details the uh, finer details of the highways okay so the light usually vibrates in all the directions and when a polarizer comes in the way then the light gets to be vibrating in one direction only this is the principle behind user using a polarized light that polarized light which is vibrating in only one direction is able more to penetrate deep deep down into the dermis and make us able to see the structures underneath okay so there are certain important concept that you need to know before going you know to exactly go for the dermoscopy and they are going to unlock an image for you these important principles are the understanding of a contact dermoscopy and non contact dermoscopy in the contact dermoscopy obviously you bring your face down you see exactly into the lens of the dermoscope and in the non contact one there is a <clears throat> uh there is a, a hard piece that connects to the system and then you put on the device somewhere on the skin of the patient and you don't actually have to bend down to see uh you are obviously seeing in the system you know that is attached the cordless devices are there these days so non contact dermoscopy and contact dermoscopy both of them are in practice okay so there is another concept which is called polarized and the non polarized uh, in most of the dermoscopes today you can toggle between the two modes that is with single button you can shift between the polarized and the non polarized modes and this is pretty much visible over here that why is that important for example when you see melanoma 
in the uh, polarized mode you see these uh, shiny white lines or streaks these are because of the presence of newly formed collagen and the different properties of the collagen as compared to the native collagen so it becomes more shiny and more apparent so these are called the chrysalis or the shiny white lines and they are apparent with the polarized dermoscope because obviously the polarized light is going to go down into the dermis and make us able to see the deeper structures however when you see the same lesion in non polarized mode of the dermoscope all of these things disappeared okay so we saw that in melanoma the polarized mode was important but it's in melanoma there are so many other structures that are visible more with the non polarized mode for example the blue white veil the famous blue white veil that is pretty much visible with the non polarized mode but not with the polarized mode okay now let's look at the example over here in the lower picture which is a seb case seb keratosis and you see these comedo like cysts over here in the polarized mode but in the non polarized mode these white milia like cysts uh, become more prominent okay so the milia like structures become more prominent in the non -pol non polarized modes of the dermoscope both of these are important and i would advocate you i would urge you guys to see uh, a lesion with both the modes first you see in a non polarized mode basically the non polarized mode adds more glare whenever you see uh, any lesion with a dermoscope and you find that there is so much glare everything is white white so probably you uh, you are in a non polarized mode and every light wave that is uh, striking the lesion is coming back to your eyes and it's making you uh, feel the glare and if you just toggle um, with the button that is uh, supposed to you know toggle between the polarized and non polarized mode you will see that the glare instantly disappears and then you are able to see the details underneath the skin so that's the polarized mode you can see you should see with both the modes what are really the differences between the polarized and the non polarized mode there are so many differences but i just made this table uh, to uh, highlight some important things like for example the melanin is visible with both but more so with the polarized mode of the dermoscope pink red or the vessels are more visible with the polarized dermoscopy understandably because obviously they are located deep down into the dermis blue white veil as i told you is visible more with the non polarized dermoscope because it is because of the presence of orthokeratosis which is there in the superficial uh, part of the epidermis and uh, peppering okay so peppering is there more in the non polarized mode chrysalis or white scar is there in the polarized mode because it's located deep down and in the last example we actually saw it vessels more with the polarized mode and then milia like cysts are visible more with the non polarized mode milia like cysts are seen in yes seborrheic keratosis so now a million dollar question which dermoscope to buy there are these are the important brands the the famous brands you may say these are the the famous brands throughout the world isme se kaun si wali khareedni chahiye so it depends all on the availability on your pocket on the available resources so ye kuch hai jo aap dekhte ho jab aap search karte hain ki kaun si dermoscopes hai so by the way we are trying to get in touch with some of the uh, companies that are making dermoscopes to make them available over here in pakistan because currently uh, with utmost effort i could only uh, touch fine people and uh, they too have only one or two models here in pakistan uh, not many of them uh, the device is not pocket friendly it's uh, it's around 2 lakh and 10 to 15 thousand at the moment but because of the fluctuating you know dollar prices uh it goes up usually seldom comes down so uh, those of you who are going to american academy may buy it from there and those who are not going there we'll try to make it available over here in pakistan so what are the indications of dermoscopy are you going to see each and every lesion through dermoscope no you're going to see which lesion is concerning or has a history of change or seems ugly than rest of the lesions the ugly duckling sign okay so mainstay is that the it's indicated where you think that the lesion is different from rest of the lesions the patient thinks that it's concerning it's changing over time the color is changing shape is changing or it may be giving the symptoms okay so that's the indication all right so now we are almost in the middle of this presentation we are about to start with the terminology of dermoscopy it's a little bit tricky but if you follow me from a b c you'll be able to understand it properly i promise 
so we'll start from the basics and then it's always the combination of different basic structures that lead to the patterns and the clues and the diagnosis is possible then so starting up from the basic terminology in dermoscopy these five structures are the basic structures in dermoscopy and then everything starts building up on these basics so i've made up uh, you know the hand just to memorize it that there are five basic structures so agar aap chahe to apne hath gande kar sakte hain with the help of a pen you can make the uh, structures over here you can draw them so that you uh, do not forget them so let's start up from the little finger lines pseudopods circles clots and dots so these are the five basic structures that are there in whole the dermoscopy now the lines are present in various uh, you know combinations or architectures or uh, in directions you may say these are the five possible combinations of the lines that you may see in dermoscopy they may be present radially or branched or reticular making up a network they may be seen parallel or they might be curved i made this diagram all by myself to you know understand the basics this i did for myself and i felt that this is uh, you know very easy to understand now because initially it was really difficult and none of the dermoscopy books or in none of the articles it was written in this in the way that i just showed so i made it for myself to understand that what are the basic patterns so radial branched reticular parallel and the curved are the five possible combinations of the lines line is the first basic structure to see what is the second one yes you are very right the second structure is a pseudopod hmm so pseudopod is a line which is ending up in a bulbous kind of structure circles are empty from the inside clots are of various shapes and solid and uh, the dots are small less discernible objects and obviously they are solid staining they are not empty from the inside so let's look at the details uh, how do they look like clinically and dermoscopically Hmm. In life, you come across all the lines, all the possible combinations. For example, on a highway, you may see the parallel lines, and the parallel lines in dermoscopy are visible in the nail dermoscopy or nicoscopy. And here, you may see the brown color. These are all the shades of brown. No gray and no blue, and only the shades of brown are visible. And these lines are present parallel to each other. uh the bands uh, the width is almost the same however the color is variable so this is a nevus a subungual nevus and uh, this is uh, an example of the lines going parallel now the next combination of the line is a radial one you may see this uh, you know representation of radial lines in a plant and dermoscopically radial lines are seen in the periphery of some of the lesions as uh, over here you can see these lines all around the lesions they are the radial lines that are uh, streaking out from the uh, middle of the lesion center of the lesion and then they are going out since they are present throughout the periphery of the lesion we would make up a diagnosis of the nevus yes and if they were present in only one part of the lesion that is on uh, on one side maybe and then uh, it would be concerning obviously uh, it would not be a simple nevus then but this picture is the nevus okay the third combination or the third pattern of the lines that might be visible is a curved line and the curved lines are seen in solar lentigo in solar lentigo the lines are usually curved as you may see over here throughout the lesion this is diagnostic of solar lentigo okay so you can memorize it actually the lines when they are present in reticular conformation means uh, they are forming up a network pretty much visible in nevi as well as melanoma by the way this is a picture of a melanoma and here you may see network the network is there in the left and the right side as well however the network uh, is typical and atypical it's atypical okay why is it atypical a typical network is the one that is uh, similar throughout the lesion 
but over here as you can see this uh, network is not similar throughout the lesion on the left hand side it is lighter in color the holes encircled by the lines are quite smaller as compared to these bigger holes that are being formed by the network and then the color is obviously dark the thickness of the lines that are making up the network varies throughout the lesion so all of these things point towards the atypical network so this atypical network is qualifying for the melanoma diagnosis all right this is just to show you how a pigment network is formed if you extend your imagination just see that the number of melanocytes per uh, uh, unit area or uh, yes per unit area is one two three four five in this bluish part you're seeing you're viewing the skin from the top so per unit uh, area in these reedy ridges the number of melanocytes is almost four to five and the in between the reedy ridges this part the dermal papilla part suprapapillary area of the epidermis the number of melanocytes is also the same one two three four five so equal number of the, the melanocytes are there in this big area and this small area and whenever they are present in larger amount when you are viewing the skin from top this area appears darker as compared to the area over here which appears whiter or lighter so these uh, you know the supra papillary part of the epidermis gives you the appearance of holes of the network and the Ridge ridges, the area of the ridges gives you the appearance of the lines of the network. So this is how a network is formed actually. All right, coming back to the lines configurations, the last one uh, is the branched configuration of the lines, and you see these branched lines in BCC, basal cell carcinoma. Just say that you are seeing here barrier lines and thick lines. All of these are vessels. और पिगमेंटेड लाइंस भी होती हैं बट यहाँ पे जो एग्जांपल मैंने लगाई है दैट इज ऑफ बीसीसी विद द लाइन ब्रांच लाइंस फॉर्म्ड बाय द ब्लड वेसल्स ओके सो देयर वाज ऑल द डिटेल अबाउट द लाइंस और अगर हम इसको रिवाइज करना चाहें तो लाइंस की जो कॉन्फ़िगरेशंस हैं वो कुछ ऐसी हैं रेडियल हो सकती है ब्रांच रेटिकुलर पैरल एंड कर्व ऑब्वियसली सो नाउ गोइंग बैक टू द सेकेंड स्ट्रक्चर The second structure is a pseudopod. Yes, pseudopod is a line which is ending up in a bulbous kind of thing, and you may see the example over here. Uh, this is a pseudopod. This is a pseudopod. This is a radial streak. Okay. Okay. So the red arrows are pointing towards the radial lines. No, the red arrows are the pseudopods. The red arrows are the pseudopods because they are uh, globular in the periphery and then they are going inside as streaks or lines. So the red arrows are the pseudopods, and the black arrows are lines, radial lines. So this is a Reed's nevus because these things are present throughout the periphery of the lesion. They are not present in a single part of the lesion or focal. So this is a Reed's nevus and. Uh, you can appreciate the pseudopods over here pseudopods okay third thing is a circle as you may see these are the white circles over here and then in the center of the lesion is a bit of ulceration and uh, crusts mm, okay and these around the lesion are holes lots and lots of the white circles this is a white keratin and ulceration bleeding crusting keratin and the white circles all of these are make up the diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma and the white circles are diagnostic most specific sign of scc well differentiated scc okay next basic structure is a clot so clots are the solid staining elements of various shapes और ये ऐसे आपको नजर आते हैं इन द लेफ्ट हैंड साइड आप ये देखते हो इट्स अ सिंगल ब्लू क्लॉड इन बीसीसी यहाँ पे ये पिगमेंटेड ब्राउन क्लॉड्स हैं इट्स अ नीवस और ये वाइट माइलिया लाइक क्लॉड्स हैं इट्स अ सेब्रिक केरेटोसिस देन द ब्लड लेक्यूनी इन ह्यूमन जियोमा आर ऑल्सो लाइक क्लॉड्स दे आर सॉलिड स्टेनिंग विद वेरियस शेप्स Now this the clod's name has something to do with the shape only. It does not say that it has to be red or it has to be brown or it has to be blue. It might be of any color as you may see it's 
it's blue and it's brown and it's white and it's red it's of various colors but the shape has to be uh, you know the uh, same as that of a cloth so cloths could be having multiple angles and curved uh, peripheries so different different shape of the solid staining elements aur inko hum kehte hain cloths okay so dots dots are the smallest discernible objects that you may see with your eyes and uh, they usually appear of the same shape because they are very much smaller yahan pe aapko dekh sakte ho there are so many dots dispersed and but they are not typically seen throughout the lesion they are present they are focused in one part of the lesion in the upper part and in the lower part it's basically a negative network over here we'll talk about it uh, shortly so this is a lesion of melanoma the the dermoscopic picture belongs to melanoma and these are the dots that you see dermoscopically okay so we just uh, finished the basic shapes in dermoscopy uh, which are of five types uh can you revise them with me yes come on try all right starting from the little finger lines pseudopods circles clods and dots okay line pseudopod circle clods and dots fine so these are only five structures and then whole of rest of the dermoscopic interpretation is going to depend on them another concept why is the sky blue the sky is blue because of the tindall effect and what is the tindall effect tindall effect is that the uh, light rays that are coming from the sun are vibrating in different directions all of them they belong to different wavelengths they have different colors but the wavelength which is depicting the blue color is seen the most why because the blue wavelength is a wavelength that scatters 16 times more than rest of the colors kyunki ye 16 times zyada स्कैटर करती है तो यही बहुत ज्यादा हमें नजर आती है वेवलेंस दैट्स व्हाई द स्काई इज ब्लू कंसीडरिंग द एटमॉस्फेयर और जब आप ऊपर चले जाते हो खला में स्पेस में देन द स्काई इज नो मोर ब्लू बिकॉज देर इज नो स्कैटरिंग देर इज नो एटमॉस्फेयर ओवर देयर सो द स्काई अपियर्स ब्लैक देन ओके ओके सो दिस इज अ पिक्टोरियल रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ डिफरेंट स्ट्रक्चर्स एट वेरियस लेवल्स एंड दिस इज वाई डू वी सी डिफरेंट कलर्स इन डरमास्कोपी एंड द कलर्स यूजली डिपेंड अपॉन द पोजिशन ऑफ समथिंग इन द स्किन जैसे कि समथिंग इफ इट्स देयर इन द टॉप पार्ट ऑफ द एपिडामिस इट वुड अपियर ब्लैक इफ समथिंग इज देयर एट द डमो पिडामल जंक्शन यू विल सी इट एज ब्राउन इफ द स्ट्रक्चर इन क्वेश्चन इज देयर इन द एपिडामिस यू विल सी एट ग्रे when it gets more deeper into the dermis you see it as blue and then obviously the white thing is a scar like thing new collagen formation and the blood vessels appear red yellow is usually the crusts or serum that is that exudes on the surface of the skin usually appears yellow same kind of picture showing that all of the light that falls on to the skin is blocked by something present in superficially so this part appears black however if the structures that are scattering the light are present in the superficial dermis uh, then some of the light is scattered back and some of it is absorbed and the structures appear as gray see when there is so much scattering because you know that the so much scattering is of the blue light blue light scatters 16 times more and the structure is deeper down into the dermis scattering is more so you see it as blue it's just a revision of the same concept okay so uh, symmetry is all there in nature and whenever you look around you see that almost almost every natural thing is in symmetry talk of the solar system talk of the galaxies talk of the plants the animals the um geography everything is symmetrical okay but the things go asymmetrical when they try to get malignant so the malignant cells defy natural laws and that's why they start becoming atypical or asymmetrical so in your opinion which diagram appears symmetrical and which one is non symmetrical okay just do not concentrate on the outline as you may see on the left hand side the yellow dot is present on one side of the blue bigger uh, circle so it's not seemingly symmetrical however on the right hand side you see that the uh, yellowish uh, squares are distributed throughout the periphery of this blue area so we say that these this is a symmetrical 
diagram so just concentrate on the architecture of the basic structure just not on the outline you don't have to consider the outline just see the re, uh, the arrangement of the structures okay the architecture hmm translating in this concept into chaos and non chaos you see that in this picture there is a little bit of chaos because there is a, a different pigment on one side of the lesion however in this lesion um ignore the shape of the lesion just concentrate on the pigment the pigment stays the same throughout the lesion it's not darker anywhere so it's not chaotic but the lesion on the left hand side is chaotic okay so what do you think is it chaotic or is it non chaotic yes it is chaotic it's chaotic okay why is it chaotic because this brown on the right hand side goes to black and gray and then there's are the polygons in the center they are not there in the uh, bottom part of the picture and then there is whole of white lot of white over here and then in the left hand side is peppering and grayish white structures the whole of the lesion is having some um, asymmetry in it or you may say that the lesion is chaotic by the way this is a lesion of melanoma so i'll pause over here and uh, uh, i'll start up from here restart from here to make the next part of the video because i'm <clears throat> kind of you know thirsty aur mera jo gala hai wo khush ho chuka hai aur main thak chuki hu to hum yahi pe stop karte hain and i'll catch up after some time